Um, you you are a, a fitness trainer and a main fan. Now, what is your Mount Rushmore of way foods and why? Oh God, a Mount Rushmore of way foods and why? That's good. Uh, definitely. Uh, my favorite anime of all time is How to Rear the Dumbo She Lived. So I gotta put my girl Sakura Hibiki on there. Um, gotta put my girl Mirko on there from My Hero Academia. Okay, absolutely love her to death. Uh, after that, we go in gaming wise. Like, even though sort of like you don't get to see it, I fully appreciate it. Like, I would definitely add like someone like Tifa up there. But then, of course, I gotta add the legendary goat Chun Li, like, all day, every day. Had to have her. She's just absolutely incredible. Yes. Uh, so you are a content creator. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about your YouTube channel? Okay, tell you more about my YouTube channel, sure. So basically what I did was, um, I always loved fitness training, but I've always loved anime as well. So one of the things I always wanted to do was, I, when I was younger, I would always Google like, work out like this character, but I couldn't find it. Or I was like, work out to train like so-and-so, but I could never find it. So I was like, well, I'm actually a certified personal trainer. I could do that. And so I just steadily started making content based on like fictional characters. So it was like Sonic and Rainbow Dash, uh, Samurai Jack, or Batman. Man, the, the classic stuff, and then I was like, you know what? Uh, I let me move on to anime because there's just so many anime things. Because I had a what well, the OG of actual anime fitness is a person by the name of Stephen Eric Ross, who is the anime trainer. I call him like my sensei because he is just like absolute goat of all this stuff. And so like um, I started doing my version of that, and you know it picked off, called up with tunes, and yeah, we've worked together like several times now. So yeah, he's really awesome. I would say like he's like the goat and stuff like that. And I'm like. A student of him, but yeah, like that's how I got started, and then it just went from there. Who, who would you say are your? I had to go with that Rushmore, Mount, Mount Rushmore of uh, male characters uh, that of fitness training. Okay, or crazy or like. okay, no, that's perfect. Uh, definitely Goku, he's gonna be number one. Uh, my man Rock Lee. Have to put him up there. But like, it's it's always weird because I always want to put like Guy and Rock Lee together. But it's just like I, Rock Lee. I'll just give him the thing right now. Uh, number three, uh, Ipo from Hajime no Ipo. I love that boxing anime. It's absolutely incredible. So inspirational. And uh, oh my god, Lord, there's so many great ones. Uh, I've been on one piece mood lately, so I've definitely seen more on that because I've just been I've been such a a one piece mood like definitely like because I like I would go like yeah definitely Goku, Ipo, Rock Lee, and then right now I'm in the Zoro mood like just seeing him do his badass stuff is gonna put me like yeah I'm in the Zoro mood but it could change like it could definitely change depending on the day. <laughs> oh uh, yes, I'll go you. Um, uh, so like. Going off the last question, um, a lot of anime characters have different training regimens. Uh, in your opinion, who has the most realistic training regimen that we can actually do, and who has the most unrealistic style training regimen, like training at the uh, time of Right. Well, well, the one thing I'll always get so who has the most realistic and who has the most unrealistic that like we can do training wise? I think. Realistically, there's a lot of stuff in Hajime no Weepo that's very grounded that you can definitely do in real life. Like there's some things where it's like, okay, that's a bit excessive. But then there's other things where it's like, okay, no, that that works. That works so well for what we're doing. Um, unrealistic. I see the gravity training is a really valid one. 
Though I will give them a slight edge because they're aliens. So I'm like, you're an alien, so of course you can handle this and stuff like that. Though even with the Sea Fighter humans, they like handle crazy stuff all the time. Though like, um, there's a lot of stuff in like, uh, like One Piece, like with Zoro and stuff like that. It's like you are howled and you're lifting a boulder. What do you mean? No, 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 no. No, what do you mean by that? And it's just like there's various things like where you look at certain things like absolutely not absolutely not another one is like you know even batman to a degree because it's like when do you sleep like when do you sleep like how are you able to do all this stuff but yeah it's absolutely just crazy so i would definitely say like realistic epo most unrealistic if we want to go the easy route definitely the same because a thousand times gravity is just like all that stuff but if you want to go like someone who's like human probably stuff like in like one piece where it's like wait you feel so you just basically bought a bunch of bad news and now you can fight like you can cut buildings in half like it's just, it's crazy, it's everything. Oh, can you guys do a question? Well, that's kind of bounce off him. Have you done the One Piece, uh, One Punch uh, workout? <clears throat> oh yes, actually, uh, the One Punch Man workout, have I done it? There is actually, I, this is one of those times I get to pull the hipster card where it's like, I watched One Punch Man, I knew One Punch Man way before the anime ever came out. Like I saw it when it was like drawn on a napkin basically when one used to do it. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. And then Yusuke Murata started drawing and it was like, this is beautiful. I can't wait. I hope this gets to anime in 2015, lo and behold. And so I remember I actually did that workout for 14 days when I was 22 years old. And I was like, I was going in, I did it. But then like on day 14, my knees just gave out on me because of all the running. I was just like, oh my God. And then like, I was thinking like, if I stuck with this, I could have a limited power. But no, it was just like, no, I can't. Uh, I, I love the one punch man, like training regiment that being so simple. But there were, there are also certain things though. I look at it as like an actual coach from like, like well, you're not hitting in any rear delts. You're gonna have like horrible like shoulder issues if you don't like train that. And then there's other things was like, you're only doing sit-ups but not doing any like pussy or chain work or back work i'm like okay yeah definitely need something to fix that but like yeah i, I love the one punch man workout i think it's super cool. yes oh you had a question uh yeah how how important is your physical fitness or <laughs> physique to your cosplay to cosplay oh physical fitness to physique to cosplay I think it depends because sometimes I uh, like, you know, there's some people out there who are just like so confident with it where they're just like, oh, I may not be as like cut as Luffy, but I'm going to rock it. And it's just like, no, I find that so admirable because like, I, I don't care. I love this character. I do it. And I'm like, I encourage people to do that. I think for me, like, it depends on like what type of character it's like. For instance, if I was cosplaying a Nosuke, like, I, I do like to like, you know, spend a few weeks, get my diet in check so I can like get the abs and the muscles all cut up for it. But like other times, it's just like, okay, you know, I, I think it depends. I think it like can boost it a certain way but now they got like um i saw a dude out there with like the fake muscle suit now so it's like you don't even need to like work out for you because just like you got this unless like you're like trying to like flirt with someone and go like yeah let's, let's go back to my room and just like <laughs> so anyways it's just like yeah you know, stuff like that but <laughs> there's stuff like that that's all i think uh, yes. uh, oh uh so <clears throat> i i i i i'm i'm a fan of the content uh but for those that are on the fence about uh, you know, uh, fitness regimen, how would you motivate them to, to go in realistically and and to keep at it? Okay. No, no, no problem. I love that question. Where it's like, how would I motivate someone to keep at it and go with it with fitness stuff? Uh, what I would do personally is everyone has different like goals for themselves and everyone has different like ways to entertain themselves. Some people just sadly do not like weightlifting or like going to the gym or doing this sort of stuff. So what I do is I try to find a healthy activity that they can stay consistent with. Because one of the things people will talk about is if you are consistent, you can make such great results because like it doesn't matter because you're having fun with it. You're not thinking of it and stuff like that. So it's like, oh, you don't like lifting? Well, why don't you try um, gymnastics? There's a gymnastics place you can try all this other stuff out. That builds muscle and builds a bunch of stuff that will super athletic or oh you want to like you know do like a bunch of uh rock climbing or something like that that's super fun you get your energy going or you can, like play vr go swimming try a martial arts class boxing any of that stuff it's just like yeah try any of these engaging things but thing is it but if it's like oh i want to be consistent because i want to get this physique i just say uh first get a program and, and nothing like too hectic because what happens to a lot of people is they get these like oh, this is five days a week this is like, I'm gonna fry my central nervous system, I gotta do all this cardio, I gotta strip diet and stuff like that. So it's just like, I say start with like three days a week lifting, 
and you know like daily walks and stuff like that instead of like you know doing cardio uh, like just like instead of doing like intense cardio just like you know daily walks like just aim to get like you know 10,000 steps or like uh, 60 minutes walking something like that and uh, yeah I would say do that consistently and then you'll start to notice your body change and I think it just has some phenomenal results all around but like if you don't like something and it's just like well I really want this it's gonna be harder like because you do it but if you're just like well I just want to stay consistent and it's like well I found this thing it makes it so much easier now. <clears throat> uh, yes go ahead. Alright so on your YouTube channel you do uh, a mass over 644,000 subscribers and you know, other social media platforms you have uh, it's happened overnight, but when you need to be prepared when you go a little bit more hit that and you start. Oh, okay, I remember this so vividly, so that's a good question. So, like, did I prepare for my virality when I hit, like, 634,000 subscribers? Oh, so, so basically what happened was, I remember I was working at Burger King. And I was just uploading every Saturday. I was just like, I'm just gonna upload every Saturday at 10 a.m. because I love Saturday morning cartoons. So I was like, this is my thing. I wanna go like it's every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. And so I did that. And I had like one video. I remember like One Punch Man just started playing on Toonami. And I was like, oh, it's coming up to the, the dub episode of the, the training scene. I was like, let me actually break this down from a personal training perspective uh, just to put it out there for the people. So I did that. It was like August 2016, and then I remember <clears throat> I started noticing certain things. I was like, oh wow, this is doing really good. I got like 20k views, and like usually my videos it took like a that, like a week for them to get a thousand at a point. Like I was just very slow, and then I was like, oh dang, it's going up. I got 50,000, and my subscribers are going up too. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. And then I started noticing like, oh no, they're, they're keep going up. And then it went up from like, I went from like, because I, I was just doing casual stuff before, so like I got like 10k, but I wasn't serious with it. I was like, oh, this is just meme stuff. And then all of a sudden, I shot up to 60k subscribers, and I was just like, oh, damn. And I was like, well, I want to keep this momentum going. What can I do? So I was like, let me do this video. Let me do this video. Let me do this. And so I stay consistent over and over and over. And then I just played it on and off, just like being consistent with stuff that like I wanted to do, but also what my audience wanted to see. And so like that's how I mentally prep for it. Was just like. Give them what they want and do what you enjoy. Like, I don't want to do something where it's like, oh, I got viral for something I don't like doing. So it's just like, I want to, like, keep doing stuff that I'm passionate about. So, yeah, I just steadily took it that way. That's how I took it. It was just like, oh, oh, wow. Like, this is actually taking off. This can do something. So that's how I look at it. Mm, oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, I think there's great people who can take their passion and turn it into a business. So at what point did you start uh, offering training programs? Oh, so I'm actually a personal trainer by trade. I've actually been one since 2010. I started YouTube in like 2013 uh, issues when I got serious before. It was just like me and stuff. Uh, it was due to like, uh, again, like my old Winnie Richards magic did a lot of stuff. But like, uh, no, it was um, one of those situations where I, for years prior, I was a personal trainer. Like in high school, people would come up to me and ask for programs and be like, yo, so what What can I do for this? And I would make one. And then like, I was like, oh, you can actually make this a career. So I like, I went to college, uh, got a degree in kinesiology, stuff like that. It helped with all my um, training and stuff like that. I would train clients in the actual gym. And then um, I was like, oh, I'm such a big nerd of this anime fitness stuff. I want to like add to this. So did that. And I started noticing like, oh, I can actually help people online because I'm getting all these subscribers and they want me to train them. Like I train my in-person clients. So I was like, okay, I can, I can do that. So I just started to take it piece by piece and be like, hey, so I'm offering training online. You can go email me here and then we set up a meeting see if it worked out so that's what I've been doing a lot more frequently is just training people online it's been super like I love helping people and stuff like that and like various fans are also because we have a different bond it's like I right, just think Rocky when he's doing this it's like okay I got you and they all call me sensei too when we're coaching so it's just like yeah sorry you got this it's awesome yes um so I I, I don't remember this <clears throat> you did a full video on this but uh you um, it was uh, bullying involved. I remember the drag ball. Um, when you experienced that, how how did you get through that? That would, that you would say would help others that have experienced that? Oh, okay. So basically, how I got through the bullying and stuff like that. So like, it was just um, a big deal during childhood. And the question was basically asking how I stay 
stay so positive with like the fact that I went through such harsh bullying at such a young age. And um, he was asking, basically he'd been going through a lot of this at his school, like he's getting beaten up and called names, which is horrible, absolutely horrible. But um, he asked me my opinion and I figured I'd share some tips because they helped me out when I was down, well, now especially. But yeah, figured I'd share this and make this video. That's one of the things I thought uh, I always saw Goku, and he was so nice and so kind, like, he like, beat people up that were, like, wrongdoing, and I was like, this is such a motivational guy, I want to be really like him. And so when I started training, that was one of the things I was like, I want to do that, and I also want to show people who may not be as athletic and like Goku that you can transform, like, because that was one of the things I loved, is, like, you actually saw him train, it wasn't like Superman who just magically was less, or like Spider-Man who got, like, bit or anything like that, it was just like, no, I, I worked out a lot, and got me strong, so I thought that was super, super inspirational. And so when that, when I was able to transform myself, I was like, I can help others do the same thing, so that's what I was able to do. Last question? <clears throat> yes. Oh, yeah. You, oh, yeah, you had one. Oh, yeah. Um, so you talk about how you was in high school doing uh, training for people then. Yeah. But what's your origin story? What was your first thing that got you into the path of this? Oh, the first thing that got me into the path of this was basically, um, again, like I was bullied as a kid and then like I watched anime and it, like, it motivated me to train. But then like I'm in high school, I met a couple people who were like also going to the gym and stuff like that and I started going with them. And then that's what really like sparked me because before I was just sort of just doing push-ups and calisthenics and all. And that's when I first started lifting and I was like, this is awesome, I love this. And then after that, I was like, no, uh, I want to like get really involved in this. And so I fell in love with weightlifting there. And then like watching anime and like learning different techniques, I fell in love with that. And I was like, oh, I can actually help people better with that. So that's what motivated me. It's just like uh, my friend, meeting my friends, going to the gym, and then utilizing stuff and like learning all these different things. That's what I'm doing. Yes. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for having me.